And Dominican said, see you later to Detroit, along with Nick Fairley and CJ Mosley. So does that mean the Lions are venturing back to the basement in the NFC North? Not a chance. But let's face it, losing Sue is huge. Not only do you lose the best defensive tackle in the game, but a complete workhorse who saw 875 snaps last season. Only three guys had more. J.J. Watt, Fletcher Cox, and Cam Hayward. It's a lot of production you got to make up for. The newly acquired Haloni Nada will obviously see a lot of snaps, but at 31, he's probably going to be more near the 700 range. He saw 714 in 2013, and I couldn't really get a good gauge last year because he didn't play in the regular season from week 13 on due to a suspension after testing positive for Adderall. Tyron Walker will start alongside Nada, but behind those two, the depth is pretty scarce. That's nearly 200 snaps that need to be accounted for. But let's remember that this was a defense that was the NFL's best against the run and second in scoring defense a year ago. Ter Terrell Austin did an outstanding job in his first season as defensive coordinator using an aggressive 4-3 scheme with a lot of movement up front. There was obviously a lot of talent besides Sue. That's, you know, there's the up-and-coming Ziggy Ansa. There's DeAndre Levy. Uh, Detroit's going to get middle linebacker Steven Tulloch back. So there are some pieces still there. While Detroit may not have a top five defense, in my opinion, they certainly have the talent to finish in the top ten and with a solid offense led by Matthew Stafford and Calvin Johnson. Why can't the Lions make consecutive playoff appearances for the first time in 20 years? Their 11-win season a year ago was the club's best mark since 1991. And speaking of the offense, Stafford got a reboot with the addition of quarterback guru and head coach Jim Caldwell to go along with former New Orleans offensive coordinator Joe Lombardi. Sure, there are some things that Stafford did that made you scratch your head. His improved footwork did help him eclipse a completion percentage of 60 for the second time in his six-year career, and he trimmed his interception total from 19 to 12. And then there were the five game-winning drives in the fourth quarter. Progress is being certainly made. The Lions used the NFL draft to try and improve their running game, which ranked 28th a year ago. They took guard Lake and Tomlinson in the first round and selected running back Amir Abdullah in the second. Abdullah is opening up a lot of eyes in training camp and preseason so far. Uh, he was my third-ranked running back behind Todd Gurley and Melvin Gordon in my pre-draft rankings. And to be honest, I shook my pet at people who didn't think he was top five. We'll see if he can ride the momentum of a strong camp in preseason into when it really counts. So, uh, I got rankings below, unit rankings below. They are in the description box, so make sure you click on it. Make sure you look at them. And, well, you don't have to look at them, but I think you should because they're awesome. Yeah. Okay, position by position we go now. Let's start with Stafford, who threw 22 touchdowns and 12 interceptions to go with a completion percentage of 60.3. His 14 total turnovers were career low. Stafford has one of the strongest arms in the game and is capable of throwing from a plethora of arm angles, but that can also come back to haunt him because this is when his errors occur. I still think he needs to improve throwing under duress, but overall, like I said earlier, there are positive strides being made. I've always kind of thought he was overrated, but last year, you know, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. I thought he was solid. Kellen Moore's the backup. Dan Orlovsky, he's the third fiddle. So there's that. As good as Abdullah looks in camp, I still think Detroit will use the three-headed attack of Joyke Bell, Theo Riddick, and Abdullah. Gone is Reggie Bush but he averaged just 3.9 yards per carry last season. Abdullah has a lot of wiggle to him. He's creative, elusive, quick in space. His jump-cutting ability is outstanding. He's also a little bit, you know, deceptively powerful. As you'll see below, I have Abdullah ranked as just a 7, but keep in mind, I did these numbers long before training camp started. If I had to give him a number now, I'd probably be, like, in the 7.3 to 7.4 range, which is above average. Like Bush, Bell averaged just 3.9 yards per carry as well last season, but he's powerful, breaks a lot of tackles inside. I like Riddick a lot. He's good at catching the ball out of the backfield, and he's got that same kind of wiggle to him as Abdullah does. 
Before I get into Calvin Johnson, let's talk about Golden Tate because honestly, I think he's the most unheralded wide receiver in the game. He's outstanding. His 1,330 yards, 1,331 yards were the sixth most in the league last season. His ability after the catch is among the best in the league. He's very, very elusive, quick and shifty. He can change direction in a dime. I love him. What can I say? On to Megatron now. I gave him a rating of 9 and still have him atop my wide receiver rankings, but he's been as high as 9.5 in years past, so there has been a little bit of a drop-off. But again, not to the point of having another wide receiver leap over him. It's going to be 30 in September, and a bulky ankle cost him three games a year ago. So Calvin's gone from posting an NFL record 1,964 receiving yards in 2012 to 1,492 in 14 games in 2013 and 1,077 in 13 games a year ago. So if he can play a full slate of games, is he going to be in the 1,400 to 1,500 or higher range? Or will we see his numbers start to slide in the 1,200 range? I still think he's got a you know a couple of years uh, left in him, at least being elite. At 6'5", 235, Johnson is a tight end in a wide receiver's body. And he can run the 40 in the 4.4 range, which is just absolutely ridiculous. He's nearly, too impos- he's nearly impossible to cover one-on-one, especially in press coverage because he's too strong to redirect. So he's tough to cover on the short to intermediate routes due to his strength and can break away from the defense on the slant and crossing patterns using his burst. He's also extremely difficult to defend vertically because of his speed. Outside of Tate and Johnson, there's Corey Fuller, Lance Moore, Jeremy Ross, and Ryan Broyles. I've always liked Broyles, but he just can never stay on the field. Uh, The tight end position is interesting. Eric Ebron just couldn't pick up the offense in his rookie season, but he's so damn athletic, and the potential is definitely there. So uh, we'll see what he does in year two. Brandon Pettigrew, I'm sorry, but he sucks. He's terrible. I hate him. I don't think he's any good. On to the offensive linemen, and you know what? It's, It's kind of an underrated bunch. Riley Reef kind of came into his own last year, and uh, nobody knows who Adrian Waddle is. Larry Warford is a stud at right guard. Travis Swanson had a very solid rookie year as a third rounder last year, and either Manny Ramirez or Lakin Tomlinson will start at left guard. That's a solid set of linemen all the way around. Warford is the gem out of the crew. While he, while powerful, he's also very nimble on his feet, can get to the second level. Reef might be the most consistent. His technique is outstanding. Outstanding. Waddle tore his ACL in December and may return for the season opener. Uh, Cornelius Lucas will start if he's not ready to go. Swanson filled in late for Dominic Riola and certainly held his own. I mean, I, I thought he was very, very impressive. Ramirez is a very solid run blocker and I would assume would be your week one guard. Uh, Tomlinson is obviously the guard of the future. If the defense can come in, uh, if the defense can come close to replicating replicating last year's production, uh, it'll be because Ziggy Ansa will have a huge part in it. He's a guy who's not even close to reaching his ceiling, although it'll be interesting to see how he handles the trenches without Sue lined up next to him. But again, I'd say Haloni Nada isn't a bad option either. Z- Ziggy went fifth overall in 2013, despite not having two full seasons of college experience. And even in the pros, he's yet to play a full year due to nagging injuries. But again, that potential is unlimited. He's simply a freak of an athlete. He has the speed to get around the edge and the strength to power through a blocker. He had 10 sacks, 20 hits, 34 hurries during his sophomore season. Again, he's only going to get better as he continues to learn the techniques. He's a natural run defender using his length and size to fight through blockers. Uh, He did miss 10 tackles, however, but technique, technique, technique. Got to keep preaching it. He's going to learn. He's a stud. The five-time Pro Bowler Nada was an, an immovable force for the Ravens, but I don't know if I've ever seen anyone as athletic as Nada for a man his size. He finds the ball, wreaks havoc in the backfield. Walker was a part-timer in New Orleans, much better pass rusher than he is a run defender. Jason Jones is a solid run defender as a defensive end and can go inside when need be. He has a lot of length and, length and athleticism. At linebacker, the Lions have a pair of studs in Tulloch and, and Levy, but don't sleep on Tahir Whitehead either. Whitehead went from special teams coverage to a full-time starter. Pretty crazy stuff. He's a Temple guy. I went to Temple. 
Shout out to him. Tulloch returns from a torn ACL after he injured it, celebrating a sack against the Packers. I, I believe he was doing the, the discount double check uh, dance, so uh, no more of that from him. He's a tremendous athlete, one of the game's most instinctive coverage linebackers. He can match up one-on-one -on -one against both tight ends and running backs. Tulloch is known as being a big hitter in run defense. He sorts through traffic and lays the boom on ball carriers, uh, so there's that. Fresh off a four-year, $33.7 million extension received a few weeks ago. Levy is certainly on the unheralded side. He's made remarkable strides in Detroit over the last couple seasons. Uh, he used to play you know, a bit out of control at times early on in his career, but he's certainly, he's certainly learned uh, how to harness his craft. He's best as a run defender, an aggressive run-and-hit type, uses his leverage and lower body strength. He can take on blockers head-on. He uses his intelligence to sift through traffic and take down ball carriers. Uh, Levy can get after the quarterback when he blitzes or stunts, but isn't asked to do it much in Terrell Austin's scheme. In coverage, uh, he sort of had a down year, although he wasn't bad, but he had 15 passes defense and six interceptions in 2013. He was well off those marks in 2014. The second... The secondary behind the front seven is, is pretty solid. Uh, years before, I mean, it, it used to be really, really bad, but they're, they're, they're building something in Detroit. I like Darius Slay a lot. He's a feisty press corner with very good recovery speed. He'll stick his nose in there in the running game. The 35-year-old Rasheen Mathis is still a solid starter. It's because of his length and football IQ. He's been a solid mentor for Slay. Free safety, Glover Quinn led the NFL with seven interceptions, showcasing his range and great ball skills. I also like Detroit's third safety, Isa abdul Kadus. So there's that. Matt Prater righted the Lions' uh, woeful kicking game to start the season. Nate Free struggled from the get-go, and then Alex Henry replaced him and was just as putrid. Sam Martin is a solid punter, and Jeremy Ross is one of the most dangerous return men in the league. So, prediction time. I think the Lions are a playoff team once again. I've got them being the fifth seed in the NFC. I see a 9-7 and seven mark. Uh, defense, you know, th there will be a downfall. Well, a, a little bit of a, a, a decrease in the numbers and all that stuff with, with the loss of Sue. But not to the point where it's going to be horrible or anything. I, I still think they're a top 10 unit. There's still a lot of pieces to like, like I said before. So, uh, you know, I, Stafford, we'll see what happens with him. Can he stay consistent again for another season? Or is he going to disappoint? We'll see. Uh, we'll see what happens with Calvin Johnson. Will he be elite again? Is he going to put up the 1,500 yards again? We'll see about that. And Abdullah is, is the big name to keep an eye on because they might have found themselves a jewel in him. So, uh, yeah, again, 9-7. and seven. Make sure you follow us on Twitter at The Bitter Birds. I'm out of here. Later.